Corps. They are led by Sergeant Salters. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Charter School. successful students that are here with us tonight and all of the successful students that's coming now from Southeast Dallas. At this Christmas season, I am asking God that Jesus may be birthed in the heart of every uh, person the way he was birthed in Bethlehem many years ago because that birth brought new purpose new dreams, new life, and new hope. And that's what we're asking for today. We thank you for it, and we ask blessings on our community today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
He returned to Dallas ISD when he was named by the Board of Trustees to serve as superintendent in October 2015. Dr. Hinojosa has served 20 years as a superintendent, CEO, of six public education systems, including two of the 25 largest school systems in America, Dallas ISD in Texas and the Cobb County School District in suburban Atlanta, Georgia. His career in public education from teacher and coach to superintendent, CEO, spans more than three decades. Now, for those of you in the audience, they get confused with what a decade is, okay? I'm gonna change it a little bit because more than three decades makes him sound like he's my grandfather, and he's not. So I'm gonna say that he has done all this in one score, and 10 years. <laughs> Thank you. I told you I was into history. One score and 10 years. Rick Callahan is asking, what is a score? <laughs> Google it, Rick. <laughs> Google it. Dr. Hinojosa's recognitions include being named 2002 Superintendent of the Year by the Texas Association of School Boards and 2005 Superintendent of the Year by the University of Texas at Austin. He was honored as distinguished alumnus by the College of Education at Texas Tech University and as the outstanding Latino educator by the Association of Latino Administrators and Superintendents in 2014. He is a past president of the Texas Association of School Administrators. And for you taking notes, his favorite book is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a highly effective person, Dr. Michael Inaposa. Thank you for that fantastic introduction. Even if I wrote it myself, it's pretty good. Uh, I really want to commend, this is a, a great venue, this is a great audience. It's so exciting to see the growth of the Southeast Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. I was here and I was working with you guys and you guys had the vision, the idea to get it to this level and I'm so proud of you. Uh, I'm so proud of what you've been able to accomplish and you're going to make this community continue to grow and get better. So thank you for all that hard work. Well, I've been back. I'm back. <laughs> Six months. And my greatest accomplishment uh, is that I'm still the superintendent of the <laughs> So I just need to show up. And so, you know, sometimes you take yourself a little too seriously. And so they invited me to be the speaker. I said, you want me to be the speaker? Said, yeah, we want you to be the speaker. I said, you want me to be the speaker? Said, yeah, we want you to be the speaker. You want me to be the speaker? And Jesse said, yes. You're the speaker. We want you to be the speaker. I said, that's not right. Yes. He goes, okay. You're not the A speaker. You're the B speaker. <laughs> the other Flores is the A speaker. So be nice, be quick, and be calm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know how it is. I, I, wasn't it beautiful to see our students from Samuel? <laughs> I was going to march up there like that, but I got tired thinking about it. I said, I'm not going to make it. I'm going to fall down and have a heart attack. The abuelito is going to fall out. So I said, I better not do that. Uh, but also, uh, I, I do want to, this is about scholarships. Let me tell you, um, this is what's very important. Um, when I was in, in 1975, I was aimlessly walking the halls of Sunset High School, had a big old fro, and uh, yeah, right. I didn't know what the heck I was going to do. And so a teacher asked me to apply for a scholarship, and it was a scholarship for future teachers of America. And I applied and I got it. It was $500. You know what that bought me? Not much. <laughs> Two books. That's all it bought me. But it bought me a dream because that teacher believed that I could be a teacher and it changed my life. So talk about changing lives. The only thing that's going to really change your life 
his education. I'm an immigrant. I was born in Nuevo Laredo, Tamaulipas, Mexico. I'm number eight in a family of ten. And my father had the vision to bring us to the greatest country in the world so we could get an education. And we did. He said he had one rule, all of you are going to graduate from high school. And we did, all ten of us. 100% graduation rate, Latino graduation rate in the 1970s, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. But the real story of my parents is this. You know, if you have, if you have ten kids, you're going to have a lot of grandkids. Because we know how to reproduce, no? <laughs> 22, my parents had 22 grandkids. So the real story of my parents is that one generation removed, two of those 22 grandkids are special needs. They're not going to graduate from college. But 16 have. Wow. And the other four went to college. One generation removed, including my two sons, uh, th all three of my sons graduated. One of my oldest son graduated from Texas Tech in three years. My next son graduated from Harvard. He has a great job in New York City right now. And my youngest son, Taylor, graduated from Princeton, and he's now a teacher at Samuel. So he's back in the hood. So that's what it means to get an education. You can have a big impact on other people. And once you get an education, no one can take that away from you. Yeah. Right. Right. right, Mr. Cordero? Once you get that doctorate, no one can take that away from you, sir. <laughs> I'm teasing him because he's a great leader. But he's this close to getting uh, his doctorate. I said, a close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. That's it. Finish it. <laughs> you got to finish. You're that close. You got to finish. So, uh, so I think the theme for this banquet was learn, live, and lead. Learn. For the young people that are here, please don't squander this opportunity that you have. This is the, your best chance to, to change any cycle of poverty or expectation is to get an education. So you gotta learn. And you gotta learn from the school of hard knocks because it's not fair. Sometimes you have things happen to you. It's not what happens to you. It's how you respond. I learned that from the seven habits. Well, that's right. And then also to live. What makes me proud is when I was superintendent here before, Samuel was on the brink of not making it. But a lot of community people stepped up under the leadership of Mr. Cordero. Now we've got a great principal. And we got early college high, and we came up with a new idea, something to make it work. And I remember Mr. Cordero was telling me he was so mad, he'd come to Samuel with five busloads of kids getting Samuel, going to Skyline, going to Townview, going to Booker T, going everywhere. And that has changed. This year, Samuel High School was the first high school in town that met their enrollment projections, the first one. So that shows that we can change this conversation Mr. Councilman, in this, in this community, but it's going to take all of us working here and living here and staying here and coming back here. And everybody in this room is a leader. You're a leader. People are watching you. You lead people. So people are not going to believe what you say. They're going to believe what you do. Mm. So do something great. Do something great. The community supported us. They didn't have to. We just had a bond election. Last time we had a bond election, 18,000 people voted. This time, 40,000 people voted. After the early vote, I was told that the average age of the voters was 65. It was wrong. They were 71. <laughs> and the, the voters don't look like our kids. But they did the right thing because they believe in our community. They believe in us. And so they gave us an opportunity in this bond program to do more great things, including this community. And so there are some initiatives that we're going to be working with you with, early childhood education. If we can get the kids school ready, they have a much better chance to be college and career ready. Career in tech, career in tech for jobs of the future. 
going to be many opportunities in this bond program, especially at Spruce, to do something great at Spruce with some resources that we have at this bond program. And choice. We want Samuel to be the school of choice. We want Spruce to be the school of choice, but we also want our kids to be a school of, to have an opportunity to choose, along with their families, a great school to go to. So all that's coming, that support's coming in, in the bond program, and our voters made it happen, so we need to be honorable and thank them. And I want to finish by thanking you. I'm so proud. You don't realize, you know, I had to, I was here, and I left, and I came back, and I can see the difference. I can see a lot of positive energy in this community. And the chamber is a big part of making that happen. I know it's kind of hard to brag on yourself sometimes, but you've made a big difference, and we've had a lot of people step up and make a difference. So, uh, you know, and coming back to also good, because when I was here, some, other, some people didn't like me very much. Now they don't hate me as much. So sometimes it's okay to go and come back. But anyway, thank you very much. Let's have a great evening. I appreciate it. serves on the Dallas County Community College District Board of Trustees, representing District 6. Uh, she has represented District 6 since 1996 and was recently re-elected to serve her fourth term of the board. That shows a lot of dedication. Thank you very much. Uh, her education is her passion, uh, and she is committed to helping the students uh, be able to keep tuition low or uh, to afford an education in the Dallas Community Colleges by keeping tuition low. She is also dedicated to helping students, especially those uh, who come from families who do not have anyone who has previously attended college. I'm one of those. Uh, she is a fa the founder of Yaves del Éxito, Keys to Success in College Fair, for families who have held, uh, who have been held, uh, has been held every year since 2003. The College Fair brings together educational partners of the DCCCD, such as the Dallas ISD and the area universities and nonprofit organizations, to hold workshops and inform students and their parents in college admissions and for financial aid. In its 13 years, the College Fair has directly served over 15,000 students and parents. Uh, in her professional capacity, Ms. Flores serves as the Vice President of uh, organizational development for Greater Dallas Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, one of the oldest chambers of commerce in the United States. Uh, in her role, Ms. Flores is responsible for work, uh, working for, with the President and CEO uh, to operationalize the strategic plan for the organization. She's also responsible for planning and implementation of Chamber's annual STARS uh, on the RISE Scholarships Program. The program is celebrating its 32nd year of awarding scholarships to deserving students. Last year, over 3 million in the scholarships were awarded to students in the greater Dallas area. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, Ms. Flores obtained her bachelor's degree in 1994 from Dallas Baptist University. And as a, re as a returning adult, she serves the community in many uh, capacities by volunteering her time with numerous organizations. She has received many awards for her work, including the LULAC National Presidential Medal for Leadership in Education. She is included in three books recognizing Latino leadership. Chicanas in Charge, Latinas in the United States, and 500 Years of Chicano Women History. She currently resides in Oak Cliff area of Dallas, and is a proud mother of uh, five and a grandmother of 16. Will you please welcome uh, me in uh, bringing up our next speaker, uh, <clears throat> Diana Flores. The youth of our community do what they just did. Yeah. Give them a big round of applause. said when I'm at the mic, no problem. Okay, now that all the, the serious stuff is, has taken place, I know that 
Pastor Belknap did not know she was going to become part of the color guard. <laughs> and you stayed in step. I'm very proud of you. Give her a round of applause, please. You know, every, every event that I attend, people never want to acknowledge the person who says the prayer. And to me, that's one of the most powerful things that happens at an event. All right? They very rarely clap for the person that gives the invocation or the benediction. I want to thank you for that prayer. Give her a round of applause. My name is Jim Rodriguez. I am the chairman of the Southeast Dallas Hispanic Ch <coughs> Chamber of Commerce. I'm also your master of ceremonies for this evening. A lot of people go, yeah. A lot of people go, uh-oh. <laughs> because I also have a warped sense of humor. And when you get my age, you deserve to display it every once in a while. <laughs> when I was in my 30s, I was afraid. I was trying to establish my reputation. As I got into my 40s, I said, man, what am I doing? But when you get into your 50s and 60s, you go, I'm here. <laughs> this is what you get, okay? So this is what you're going to get. To my right is the chair-elect of the Southeast Dallas Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Mr. David Hernandez. Give him a hand, please. Thank y'all for coming very much. I told him he'd say a few words. He did. <laughs> What I'd like to do at this time, because it's very important, because without their sponsorship, a lot of us would not be here fixing to enjoy a fantastic meal, which I will brag about a little later. <laughs> but let me recognize our sponsors at this time, and it's going to take uh, two chairmen to do this, because he is computer literate, and I'm not. So if we did this correct, as I mention your company name, if you would just please wave at the audience so we can give you a big, well-deserved round of applause, okay? We will begin with the Dallas County Schools. Where are you? Raise your hand. I love the Dallas County Schools. I love the director. We had a little challenge. How can we transport Samuel High School Choir to this building and get them back to the school. That was a big challenge until Larry goes, I got this, Jim. Take it easy. <laughs> Give him another round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> the foundation of the Dallas County Community College District. Where are they at? At this table right here? Right here. Represented. Yeah. Diane Flores right there. And boy, does the chamber have big plans for you next year, man, in your district. Are you ready? Thank you, ma'am, so much. Next is Medico MD. Where is their table at? It's actually the health fair. Somebody. The health fair? It's the so where are they at? The health fair, right here. Oh, wow. The health fair. Thank you very much. That should be the healthiest looking table in the house. We appreciate your support. Number four is the Ford Foundation. Minerva Rodriguez. I know that they couldn't be here, but they sponsored a table, so give Ford a round of applause. I drive a Ford, so next time I'll give a little discount, I'll remind them. And I introduce them. Next is Informate. Where are they at? The table in front of my desk. There you are. Awesome magazine. Keeps everyone informed. Our gold sponsor is Coca Cola in the house. Where is Coca Cola City? No, but they gave us a table. It's a great they gave us a table. Yes. Round of applause for Coca Cola. Thank you, that. You know, I'm a history trivia nut. I used to teach history for over 40 years. 30 years ago from this year, Coca-Cola made history because they brought back their regular formula. For those of you old enough to remember, Coca-Cola changed the formula. They went downhill 1985, 30 years ago. Coca-Cola came back, and we're glad. All right. Oh, no! Oh, my goodness. 
Taco Bueno is in the house. Yes, we are. I'm very proud to represent Taco Bueno. Uh, we are 157 restaurants in five states. We're growing every year. I'm very proud to have represented them as chairman of the board, and we will not let you down this year. We have our Taco Bueno crew. It took over five restaurants, folks. It just doesn't fall together. It takes over five restaurants. I had a great area director helping me do this. Our area director in the house is Kathy Silva. Give her a round of applause. Thank you, Kathy. Eastville College, Pleasant Grove Campus. Where are you? Right there, Dr. How did you manage to get a front row table? You have connections. You know how he is, don't you? Yes. State Farm Insurance. Where is State Farm Insurance? Imelda. Imelda. Thank you so much. Mel is also on the board of directors. Fantastic young lady. A charter schools, A plus, right over here. Thank y'all very much for supporting us again. Abuelito, where are you at? Where are you seated? Who's at their table? Probably there eating sweetbreads. Thank you very much. Dallas Economic Development. Right over here. Right over here. All Pro Collision. Where's this table at? He's taking the day off. He's somewhere. Thank you, Ralph. All right. Dallas Independent School District. Where are you? There you are. They are in the house. I'm so proud of them. Tommy Lott. <laughs> They're the minority women business in the rising department. Thank you for being here. Eastville. Once again, excellence. What is that, Javier? That's the students. We want them to strive for excellence. There you go. Give our students a round of applause. And last but not least, there's a little program that's nationwide that goes throughout the schools teaching kids the proper way to raise, lower, and fold our American flag. We've got about 66,000 students paying the proper respect to our flag. I have several board of directors here this evening from the flag program with the board of directors wave to the crowd. Look at that. Thank you very much. We're a busy group. And just to share this a little bit with you before we start eating dinner, the flag program started in 2011 in the Dallas Independent School District. We were given permission to start it by a man by the last name of Hinojosa. He said, yes, you can have my permission to start it. And we started it, and we are going strong in Dallas ISD. So I thank you for that, sir, in 2011. because we need to keep this train moving forward. This is how we're going to work. Listen very closely. I have two serving stations in the back of the room. Okay, for those of you who were here last year, you basically know how we're going to do it. I'm going to point at your table. When I point at your tables, you're going to get up and we're going to split the room in half. This half to my right is going to go through this exit door, go to the serving stations, come back through the exit, and then you will have room and time to get your drinks, sweet tea, unsweet, unsweet tea. Our staff is going to go around. As you finish your plate, they will come and serve you your the dessert. The introduction, it was a bit long. <laughs> <laughs> I hope y'all didn't mind sitting through it, but uh, that means did a very good job, and thank you so much. You know, when I walked in, um, the Samuel High School choir was in the lobby singing, and those voices are just so beautiful. And I noticed uh, one of the adults that was with them, I don't know if she's a choir director or an assistant, but her face was just beaming. She was so proud of you. We're all so very proud of you. 
You have a lot of talent, and we look forward to hearing, to expecting great things from you, especially if you go on to college, not just go to college, graduate from college. And uh, for the Cadet Corps, also, thank you so much. You are very dedicated. It was very impressive. I won't do the knee thing. <laughs> I mean, the stomping thing, because I have an artificial knee. <laughs> I throw it out of socket if I do that. But anyway, thank you all so much. And uh, is it the sergeant, master sergeant? Your leader. He does a very good job with you. I'd like to acknowledge and recognize Dr. Gene Conway, president of Eastfield College. Under her leadership and support uh, for the Pleasant Grove campus, Javier Olin, the director. <laughs> that Eastfield, as well as the Pleasant Grove campus, uh, serves students with excellence. Uh, Dr. Conway has uh, worked with Israel Cordero, soon to be doctor, hopefully in early 2017. <laughs> uh, well, when he was the principal at uh, Samuel High School to establish our first early college high school that was uh, within the high school itself instead of starting directly at the college. So that partnership is really bearing some good fruit for the students. So much so that now um, Spruce High School also has an early college high school with a career technical education focus, and soon Siegelville High School will also. Has it been approved already, or am I saying it too early? It's okay, we can talk about it. So, <laughs> Eastfield College will soon have three early college high schools in the Pleasant Grove community, the Southeast Dallas community, will have excellent educational opportunities for our high school students. So, uh, I was at an event, um, was it last week, Trini? where Trinity Gotcha Early College High School, located at Mountain View College, was awarded, uh, was recognized as a National Blue Ribbon School. I was really proud to see that because that was the first early college high school within our system. And uh, State Representative Roberto Alonso spoke. A lot of us spoke. I think Dr. Um, Lombardi, the principal. Dr. Lombardi had, I think, 20 of us up there speaking, and thankfully we got through it in about three hours. <laughs> but uh, when State Representative Alonso spoke, he encouraged uh, the people there to tell their stories, tell your own story, so that others can learn from you. You never know who you're going to inspire. And that day I said, I'm not going to tell my story, I'm going to tell someone else's. So tonight I'm going to do the same thing very briefly. I'm going to tell someone else's story. I was um, probably in my late 30s and very frustrated with my life. I had gone to college um, when I first graduated high school, but I didn't finish and was working at a se as a secretary at the Dallas County Community College District. I had five children and three of them were teenagers at the same time, and that drives anybody bananas, and including me. Uh, so anyway. I was fortunate to have a supervisor who supported professional development for me, so I would go to different conferences, workshops, etc. So one day I went to this um, conference, and the keynote speaker was speaking about, was telling her story. And she was talking about how when she was 12 years old, she lived with her grandparents, and they would uh, move to different parts of Mexico, but at 12 they uh, immigrated and came to Brownsville. Who knows where Brownsville is? It's right on the Texas Maker Circle border, right? So it was at a time when we were not allowed to speak Spanish in school. And of course, she spoke no English. They gave her a, an English language test to see where they should place her. Well, she knew no English. So they classified her as mentally retarded. And that happened a lot back in those days. So she says that uh, whenever they spoke Spanish in school, they would be Punished. And one day that a parent walked in, she happened to be walking in the hallway uh, by the entrance, where, and so the parent stopped her and asked in Spanish where was the principal's office. So she was answering in Spanish, and the teacher walked up on that conversation, and, and she says that the uh, teacher began to just severely castigate her, you know, get after her, mm -hmm. uh, reprimand her verbally for talking, speaking in Spanish. And she said at that point that was, that was enough. She just couldn't take anymore. So she ran out of school never to return. So she says she uh, decided that since she was mentally retarded, she was going to make sure that um, when she got married, she was going to make sure 
that her house was the best, best kept house in the neighborhood, her husband was the best taken care of in terms of clothes and meals, etc. And when she had children, the same thing. She was gonna make sure that her children were the best taken care of, meals, clothes, etc. So when her children went to school, since she didn't speak Spanish, I imagine the husband didn't speak Spanish, the children didn't speak Spanish. And so guess what happened? Said a la historia. It's the, the same story repeated itself. They classified her children as mentally retarded mm. because they didn't speak English. And she said, I didn't know about myself, but I knew my children were intelligent. And if the only difference between them being able to be uh, considered normal or being classified as mentally retarded was the fact that they couldn't speak English, I decided I was going to learn English and I was going to help them in school because I knew they were intelligent, I knew they could succeed. So she went to the community college there in Brownsville. It turns out they didn't uh, let her uh, enroll. But she was persistent, she went again, and this time because of her persistence they let her enroll. She took English classes, she mastered English, she decided maybe I can learn. She got her GED, got her bachelor's, got her master's degree, got her doctorate. Mm. She's Dr. Guadalupe Quintanilla, a professor of linguistics at University of Houston, has uh, made many accomplishments, made history. She was one of the first Latina in history appointed to a uh, United Nations uh, committee and many other awards after that. So I'm sitting there listening to her, very frustrated. Three teenagers are all going crazy. I know that, same with me, I'm just as intelligent in an educational setting, working in the community college district at the administrative office offices. I'm just as intelligent as my supervisors, but the only difference between them and me is a college degree. And I couldn't advance. I, I was an executive secretary. I couldn't go any further. I had hit my ceiling. So I'm listening to her and I'm thinking, oh my God. She didn't even have the language and look at her. She's got now her doctorate. She didn't even have the language. What's my excuse? So then um, within a couple of years, it got even worse in terms of my children. I won't go into that. Thankfully, it's all okay now. So to keep me myself occupied and from going crazy, just fixating on that problem, a friend of mine told me, I have a friend that had similar problems to yours and it was just you know, driving her batty. She decided she wasn't gonna let that, those issues just let her, drive her to insanity. She decided to go back to school to occupy her mind, to keep her busy, to not be thinking and thinking and thinking about the problems. So I remembered Dr. Quintanilla and I said, I have no excuse. So it had taken me, the reason I had taken a job at the Dallas County Community College District back in 1985 was because El Centro College was right across the street. And I had always wanted to finish my degree. But since I had five children working full time, I would take uh, my classes during lunch, go across the street and take my class during lunch. And from 1985 to 1992, I was able to get uh, up to my 60 credit hours. I was able to go in with 40, the ones that I had accumulated when uh, I graduated high school, and it took me that long from 1985 to 1992 to get the additional 20 hours. So then I enrolled at Dallas Baptist University where they have a program for returning adults. And uh, you petition for courses based on your work and life experience. So in my first semester, I had 36 college hours. I petitioned for 30 credit hours, got all of them, and then I was like a laser light on that degree. Nothing was gonna stop me. In 1994, thankfully, I graduated with a GPA of 4.0, working full time, and with my kids still at home. So I'm very thankful for that. I'm very thankful for that because it opened up many doors for me. Doors that would have never been opened if I had not gotten that degree. So for each and every one of you here, the, 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 the high school students, the middle college students, do things the smart way. Don't do things the way I did. Be sure when you finish high school, you go straight into college and don't let anything, don't let anything stop you from getting that degree. You stay super focused until you have that degree. And I encourage you to go on, not just with the bachelors, but as Dr. Hinojosa did, as Dr. Conway has, as Javier Elguin will soon have, as Israel Cordero will, have, will soon have, get your doctorate, because then you can be a college president. 
then you can be a superintendent. You can uh, have positions that are at the upper levels of society and the changes and the effect that will have on you as a person individually and on your family. And not only your family right now, but your family for generations to come. The first college education and educated person in the family sets the path and sets the way for the rest of the family. Again, for generations to come. So think about it. It's very, very powerful. So that immediately with a college education, a family can go from poverty into the middle class. And don't ever think anything can stop you from it. We're fortunate enough to live in a country and in a time where anything is possible. The only thing that stands in your way from you accomplishing what you want to do, from you getting that uh, college education, is yourself. If you think you can't do it, guess what? You can't do it. But if you say, no matter what, no matter what, I'm going to get that degree. Dr. Quintanilla did it, Diana Flores did it, Dr. Hinojosa did it, Javier is doing it, Israel is doing it. How many of you in here have a degree? Was it easy? No. Was it worth it? Yes. yes. Young, young students, don't forget. And those of you who are adults, again, I didn't do it out of high school and then go to college and transition out of college. It took me till I was in my 30s and hit a wall. You were not knowing I could go no further unless I got that degree. I went back and I got that degree. Anybody can do it. If someone working full time with five children can get a degree, what's your excuse? Again, I encourage each and every one of you to go for it. And I congratulate the students that will be uh, receiving their scholarships tonight, like Dr. Hinojosa said. It's, it probably is not a lot of money because college is uh, expensive nowadays, but it certainly is a big motivator and it certainly says, what the Southeast Dallas Hispanic Chamber of Commerce thinks about you and the confidence they have in you and your ability. Congratulations to all of those students that will soon be receiving their scholarship. And thank you, uh, Hispanic Chamber, Southeast Dallas Hispanic Chamber, for inviting me here tonight. <laughs>